Good morning. Dear Lord, as you gathered the 5,000 to your feet, may we also be gathered here today. May you gather us in this moment to be present physically, to be present mentally, and to be present spiritually. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be pleasing and accepting to you, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning the half full cup. The half full cup. The Olympics are here from now until August the 11th. USA athletes are showing up in Paris in paraphernalia representative of our country. A week ago, however, some sports were having exhibitions. One of those sports was the men's basketball. In one of those games, the U.S. played Germany. The score was very, very close, and at times Germany was leading. It came down to the final quarter with just about four minutes left on the clock. And in a game where America trailed, LeBron James scored 11 of his 20 points in those last four minutes. With one minute and 26 seconds left on the clock, he put in a three-pointer three -pointer for added security. Germany was the champion winner in the last Olympics, so clearly they are, they are a very good team. But so are we. That's where you guys go, yeah. But so are we. <laughs> when the score is close like this, any team could win. But winning really isn't the real game changer for some. It's more about giving the game all you got. There are lots of players that can play for sure, lots of athletes that are good at what they do. But when you get to the Olympics, you generally see a different level of performance that draws the crowd out. LeBron James is one of those players that even when the game is very tense or his team is behind, he sees the cup as half full. Every day is a good day for me, James said. I'm blessed to play the game that I love to play. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. So the game of basketball is like extra credit for me. It's great to win, but James considers himself fortunate just to be able to participate in the game of basketball. And if you've ever watched him, you know why. And that, and that fact, he's good at what he does. He draws fans to him, and people follow him. No, much how, no matter how much water is in the cup, he excels. In the biblical text that Daniel read to us today, Jesus, too, had a big following. In the game of life, he spoke and performed in such a way that it left people wanting to follow him. He healed people who were sick. He raised some from the dead. He taught with authority, and he was so wise beyond his years. His teachings on love, forgiveness, and the kingdom of God were compelling, and it offered a new view of one's spirituality. He showed compassion to those who were on the outskirts of society. He was inclusive. Some even believe he was the fulfillment of prophecy. He was charismatic and passionate about his mission, which drew folks to him. John points out that these things Jesus did drew a lot of people to him. John notes that folks were following him because of signs, curious about his power, by now, the fan base is huge. And so on this particular day that we're looking in the text, Jesus anticipates the crowd, and he anticipates the need of the crowd that will follow him. And he asks the disciples, what are we going to do? United visitors, what are we going to do? And they don't just see the people, but they see the cup is half empty. Philip says six-month wages wouldn't feed this crowd sitting before us. Andrew announces there's a kid down the way that has five loaves and two fishes. And they were little fish at that. The cup isn't empty, but it's close to it. 
and you can hear this in their voice. I cannot begin to address the crowd. The disciples feel like they're up the creek without a paddle. They don't know what to do. Are you one that often views the cup as half empty? Or are you one that tends to view the cup as half full? Think about that for a minute. Psychologists use simple tests like this to determine whether a person tends to be an optimist or a pessimist. Psychologists will say optimists will usually see the glass as half, y'all are smart, whereas pessimists tend to see the glass as half. Optimists tend to focus on the good. There is still water available to drink. Whereas pessimists, on the other hand, see the negative. There is water missing from what otherwise could be a full glass. Scientists who have studied optimism have found that those who see the glass as half full tend to be happier, healthier, and even sometimes wealthier individuals. Could there be something to seeing the glass of water as half full? The disciples, for sure, in this text were overwhelmed by the people. How are we going to feed all these people? How are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to overcome what the doctor says? How are we going to win the elections? How are we going to survive? How are we going to make it in Chicago? How are we going to get more members? How are we going to get from one day to the next? This is what was on the disciples' minds. Maybe you too. Maybe you too are bogged down with how are we going to do it? You don't see how to get ahead in life. The obstacles feel real. And yet Jesus saw the cup as half full. He didn't base his actions on what he saw, but what he knew about God. He took what some would say was not enough, and he fed the people. Now granted, he may have added some, ma some magic, I mean a miracle. He knew the source of his faith. Last week after church, before I could get home, someone had called me to alert me. Joe Biden was stepping down and Kamala Harris was stepping up. And what has happened over the last week has given some hope. Some see the cup is half full, while others are despondent. They see the glass of water is half empty. Some are scared. And maybe Jesus' example helps us. The half full cup is not about what is happening on the outside of us. It's not about the people and not having food. It's not about being behind in the score. It's not even about winning. It's about tapping into our faith. My dad was a half empty cup person, maybe. His advice to me growing up was Charlene, anticipate the worst. And that way, you're always prepared. If better happens, great. There's nowhere to go but up. And so maybe there was a bit of optimism in the half empty cup that he tried to give me in life. I don't know, United, if I listen to him. I have definitely felt some speed bumps. Have you ever been driving and you didn't see the speed bump? I've had that happen to me too where I go flying right over the speed bump with all the optimism in the world with hard landings. I've had disappointments, I'm sure you too. But those come anyway. I want to be open to the miracle, maybe some of you too. I want to trust God. I want to be open to the magic. I want to see the cup as half full even when I don't. Maybe that's you too. Eric Mazambani saw the cup as half full 20 years ago when he heard that his country, Swimming Federation, was looking for swimmers for the Olympics. At 19, he started to learn how to swim, and he and one other female became the only representatives from his country, Equatorial Guinea. He competed in a 100-meter swimming race. There were only two other men in the contest with him. Due to when they shot off the gun, these men got off to a false start. They were disqualified. Now, here was Eric swimming a 100-meter race all by himself. He took the plunge. 
Speaking of water, there was lots, lots, and lots of it, more than he had ever seen in his life. He swam so slow, he established a record for the slowest time in history. They introduced lifeguards because of him, because at one point they thought he was drowning. He had a national stage with all eyes on him. He was barely crawling to the end. They were definitely not sure he would make it, and they were scared. He would win the heat that day, but his record was slow, so they couldn't give him a gold medal. The man continued on, even though his body felt like quitting. When he emerged from the water, guess what happened? From that whole arena, he received a standing ovation because the crowd thought he conveyed the Olympic spirit. Many have cried because they did not perform in the top tier. I've been looking at a few contestants this week who have been on the side upset at their importance, at their, at their performance, but not Eric. He wasn't even embarrassed. Eric emerged from the water, seeing the cup half full. Winning is not everything, he said. In our good book, it says the race is not given to what? Not given to the fastest. We got a different set of rules over here in the church. The race is given to the one who endures to the end. Eric kept going. To the one who endures to the end, he drank some water. To the one that endures to the end, he got slower and slower. To the one who endures, to the one who endures to the end. He concluded, I'm really happy about what happened. It was all worth it. He went home and began teaching swimming classes. In every Olympic since then, there have been a representative from his country. I was curious, I looked, I haven't found any winners, but I found that yes, there is representation even this year from his country. We represent a faithful God every day. I believe seeing the cup as half full allows us to tap into our faith. Just as when you go to the store and you take that credit card out and you tap, so spiritually we can tap into our faith. We don't live our best life alone. It's been a theme that has carried over week after week over the past month. But we live in faith. How else do you feed all the people? How else do you walk on water? How else do you speak to the storm? How else do you keep on going when gravity says quit? How else do you keep on taking water in? How else do you compete in this game of life? So today I began with talking about LeBron James. Over the past few weeks and probably the next few, I will be using more Olympic athletes to bring home the spiritual messages in the Bible. LeBron plays every game as though the glass of water is half full. And even when his team is not winning, he doesn't give up. And even when it's clear his team is not gonna win, he gives it his best. He doesn't stop giving it all he's got. And so this year, he and Coco were the ones selected from the U.S. to carry the torch. Selections for carrying the torch come through public nomination and applications, corporate sponsors, Olympic committees, and local heroes and celebrities. Coco and LeBron got selected for a number of reasons to represent the United States of America, and they were not the only ones. I got curious and I began asking myself, well, how many people get to carry the torch? And they say every Olympic, eight to 12,000 people touch the torch. And that's representative of all God's people. Athletes from all over the world. Former athletes from all over the world. The whole city touches the court, the torch. It takes so many doing their part. It takes LeBron and Coco and Eric and the disciples tapping into their faith. It takes all of us, no big eyes and little U's, tapping our faith, doing our part. Amen.